Hello and so welcome back to the Little Coding. So in today's video, I would like to share with you how to cache the request from Superbase inside Next.js server component. So I have this problem when I'm using Next.js and Superbase. So if you can see, I have this page right here called not cache. And if this, if you look at this page right here, it's very simple. And inside here, we create a Superbase client and then interact with a Superbase database and inside the server components. And what I want is that when we fetch this data, we want to cache it. So every time the user coming in, the next user will read from the cache, but this is not the case. So if you can see, if I navigate it to the page, uh, not cache right here. So um, it's going to make a request to Superbase and you will, so we will see the request will be uh, loaded right here. And as you can see right here, the cache is missed. So it's mean that the request right here do not cache uh, the request. So it means every time a user come in, in, it will try to fetch the data from Superbase. So this is what I don't want. And uh, that's what we're gonna do in this video. So the first one we're gonna do, we try to cache the request and we can do on demand to revalidate the cache. And then we're gonna talk about all the well security for it as well. All right, so um, how to do the caching in server component. If you look at the server components right now, when, if you wanna have the static data, by default, we're using fetch right here. So uh, Next.js uh, implement the fetch function. So it will automatically cache the data that we're using inside this function, all right? So what we're gonna do, so with Superbase, it's they're using the Superbase client to interact with their Superbase API. So that's why it do not use the fetch function from Superbase, that's why, uh, from Next.js, that's why we do not have the cache. Uh, so in order to do that, we need to using the fetch functions and to interact with the Superbase API. So as you can see right here, when we fetch, uh, when we run this function right here, uh, Next.js show us that which API that it's just trying to requesting to. So what we can do is right using this API information right here, we create a custom API uh, functions to interact with this API. All right, so let's do that. So inside here, I'm gonna create the uh, folder. I'm gonna call it a have a folder. And inside here, I'm gonna create a function called fetch Superbase uh, right here. So what we're gonna do is gonna do fetch Superbase and then we're gonna return and then we're gonna have the fetch function right here. So this fetch function will uh, fetch from this API right here. So I'm gonna uh, paste uh, this one. And then as you can see, this one is missing. So I can, actually we can remove this one. And for that, the first one is gonna be the Superbase URL right here when you set up with the Superbase and this one right here. So what we can do is you can do the process.env. And then we can copy this one right here. And then we can do add this one. And this one is the block selects right here. It's just the query to which uh, table that we wanted to interact with and which action that we wanted to do to this one. So what I can do right now is we, I'm gonna just removing this one. And then I, I can pass it as the parameter to the function. So we can call it a query. So by default, we can uh, set it to empty. So right now what I can do is we can pass a query right here. So right now, if this request is not valid, so we need to pass the API key. So in order to uh, make uh, this request uh, valid, so to Superbase, so then it's current access to the Superbase uh, API uh, projects. So for that, we need to have a header and inside a header right here, we need an API key and the API key, you can get it from this one right here. So the, the anon key right here is the API key. So we can copy this one. What we can do is we can do the process.env dot uh, this one right here, all right? So right now we have everything set up. Uh, and one more, and for this fetch right here, we have the uh, one more option is it'll be in cache. So as you can see, this has a lot of option. So this has a default. So I'm gonna choose the force cache as the default and we can pass it as, as a parameter to this one as well. So the cache right here. So I can cut this one and paste this one right here so we can use this one, all right? So right now we have a complete, so we can export this function and uh, use this one. So I'm gonna use this one inside the home page right here. So what we can do is we can do fetch uh, superbase, and then we pass the query that we wanted to do. So the query right here. So the query is gonna be the block select star right here. And yeah, I think that pretty much it for the cache we wanted to force cache. So we can do await and then we can have the respond and then we can get the JSON from it. So we're gonna do await 
and then rest stop json and then we can display this information right here so i'm going to cut this one and then we can have the json should be right here all right so right now let's go back in here let's go back into this page right here and all right so right now as you can see we be able to have this one and if you look at the request right here we have cache and hit so it means that every time right now when the user go to this page we will read it from the cache right unlike when we go to this page it will not read from a cache but read directly from superbase so to show you that we can go into superbase right here and go into the block right here and let's try to insert the new row right here so insert a row and with the user id i'm going to do post right here and post 15 and right right now with post 15 so let's hit save this one and right now we have post 15 if we go back into here if we refresh this one so as you can see we have the post 15 so this will be dynamic every time a user go into this page let's go into the cache page if i'm going here so as you can see it's still in page 14 because this one is still read from a cache all right so right now how do we how do we validate revalidate the cache how do we get the updates uh, from the latest uh data so in order to do that, we can create this one. So we can do forms. And then we have the root on right here. We can just do revalidate. And then we can create a function to revalidate that. So I'm going to do the async functions, uh, handles revalidate. And then inside here, it's going to be really simple. We can use the server uh, function right here. And then we can do revalidate pass. And then we can, this is the path that we want to revalidate. And we need to pass this functions into the action of this form and we can pass this one right here so in order to make this one work in, inside the next uh, config right here you need to pass the server actions this is the still experiment so that's why we have to do this one all right so right now this one is still in the cache so right now if we click on revalidate this one so as you can see right now it revalidated the cache and we have the post 15 all right so that's pretty much it so you can see uh, right now, if we're refreshing this one, this one will uh, be cached. So uh, the next user will come in and they will reach from a cache. All right. So right now, I think we completed two checklists, which is cache the request and do on demand revalidate the cache as well. So the next thing is uh, that we're going to do is we're going to talk about the rollable security right here. So with the super base right here, uh, by default, if you implement the rollable security, we're gonna get it by default. So let me show you what is that. So right now, if I'm going to the blog post for let's check out the role well security, if we see that in order to read this blog post, it's very simple. Uh, anyone can read this one because I set the expression is to true. So I'm gonna edit this one. Uh, let's actually delete this one and create a new one. And for the new policy, let's edit this one and then use this template and then for select we need to be have the user has to be authenticated and the user id need to match and i'm just changing this one so right now let's save this one so with this uh right now if we refresh this one this is supposed to be empty but still we still read it from the cache that's why we still have this one so if i click on revalidate this one the data should be gone uh, the reason is because right now we do not have the policy the right to read the data that's why we have this one and if you look at the not cache page and i think it was still the same thing all right so with that i have implemented to the login functionality it's pretty simple login with github right here so right now if i I've, after i log in with githubs so right now i have the session and the cookie setups everything ready so if i look at the uh, not cache page so you can see this one automatically pick up like uh the session and everything the access token to request the right data for the user so we don't do not have to do anything because superbase client does it for us because we do create superbase client right here we have the header and cookie everything so we know that we, we grant access to access token we fetch the data and superbase and we check the policy return the right data but for us right here we use the custom function to fetch the data so we need to provide the information to the Superbase API to know that this is request from this user and he's authenticate. Please uh, return this data to him. All right. So that's what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do is is we're gonna have the header, uh, one more header params right here, which is this uh, MT right here. So then we can spread this 
header this one so then we can when we using this one we can pass the header that we wanted to uh, uh to the our fetch to the api all right so let's do that so in this header right here what we're gonna pass is gonna be the access token of the user so when you log in with the super base you can access to the cookie so we have this cookie right here let me show you what is that so if we can get the cookie right now okay, what i can do is i can import this one and right now we have this cookie and we can console.lock cookie is a function and then we can do this one so if we going back right here and as you can see and right now if we have this cookie right here but if you can if you take a look at this one we have this uh, superbase auth token and this is the value that we want it to uh, get so right now what we can do is we can do get and then we can get this key right here superbase auth tokens and then we can do dot value so we can and then right now when as you can see right now we have this value right here and then what i can do is i can let a create a variable for this one it's going to be the uh super base token and what we can do from here we can check if there's super base tokens inside a cookie first of all we're gonna uh pass it so we're gonna do json's dot pass because everything uh, everything's right here is going to be a string so we need to pass this one so it's going to become an array and what we want is going to be the first index right here, which is going to be the access token. So we're going to be index zero. And this one is going to be the access tokens. So this token is going to be equal empty, but then we reassign it later. Okay. So right now we have this. Uh, so right now we have our access token and then we uh, reassign our access token right here. And right now, so when we have this access token, so we want to pass this access token inside the header. So we can pass the key right here. So the key right here is going to be the authorization key. And the value is going to be the bearer token. So this is because it's a uh, JSON, uh, JSON web token. And then we can plus the access token that we have right here. All right. So right now with this access token, if we going back right here, so as you, so as you can see right now, we are able to get the uh, data from this user. All right, so that's pretty much it, right? So I think this one is we can remove the roller well security right here. So right now we are done. All right, so I think that pretty much it, guys. That's how you cache requests from Superbase. And for lastly, for Superbase client right here, I'm still using it. Uh, for example, when you want to add a data, so we can still using this one. But for something that you wanted to cache, you can try to do the same as I did right here and for the data that you wanted to cache you can try to do that so if you don't want to cache those data you can just uh, normally use this function as well so all right so i think that pretty much it i hope you find this very helpful and all right let me know in the comments see you in the next video